If there was one food that can fix your brain, what would that food be? Go ahead and put it in the comment section below. Now, there are a lot of foods that can support the brain, but out of those foods, there are certain foods that are much better than others based on the nutrients in those foods. So today I'm gonna to talk about the key nutrients that support your brain and then what foods would match that more than others. Now, when I'm talking about the brain, I wanna mainly focus on cognitive improvements, okay? I'd like to emphasize improving attention, your perception, your memory, your ability to learn, reason, plan, problem solve, make decisions, and multitask. There's a huge connection between what you eat and how your brain operates. And I think that even more than nutrients, the fuel that you run your brain off is probably the most important thing. Is your brain running off primarily glucose or ketones? We'll talk more about that. There is a huge liability running your brain off primarily glucose, and there's virtually no liabilities when you run your body off ketones. In fact, your brain will respond much better when you feed it ketones. Now, the first nutrient I wanna talk about is uh, B1, thiamine. Now, what does it do? Well, in relationship to the brain, it's essential to act as a coenzyme in the production of energy. And I'm talking about ATP in your mitochondria, which is the energy factory of your entire body. But as far as your brain goes, B1 is very, very, very important. In fact, without B1, your neurons, your nerve cells that make up your brain cannot receive glucose. In fact, if you look at someone with dementia or Alzheimer's, what's really going on is their nerve cells are starving to death, okay? And so even if you're on the ketogenic diet, a certain portion of your brain will still need glucose, but that glucose can be made by your own body through a process called gluconeogenesis. So you really don't need any additional glucose to feed your brain, but you definitely need B1 to be able to utilize that glucose or those cells will die. So out of all the nutrients that your brain needs, uh, B1 is right up there at the very top. If you wanna look up more data on this, I put some videos down below, um, but you just need to look up something called berry berry and you'll, you'll get the whole picture of what, what happens. But if you're deficient in B1 related to the brain, because there's a lot of other connecting problems that can occur, your memory is gonna suffer. Your ability to focus and have attention on certain things will be very limited. You'll feel agitated. You'll be irritated. Depression is a very common symptom with a B1 deficiency. So if you have depression, I would highly recommend taking B1. And I would also add in vitamin D3. Those two together will uh, most likely pull you out of that depression. Another symptom would be something called lactic acidosis because you're not able to metabolize glucose. You get a lot of buildup of lactic acid, and uh, that can show up in restless leg syndrome. And another interesting symptom of a B1 deficiency is autonomic nervous system dysfunction. So let's say, for example, you stand up and you get dizzy, or you have a condition called POTS, where it's a very severe situation where you can't stand up or else you feel very, very disoriented. So B1 is essential for getting the fuel to your brain. Now, there's also something called brain derived neurotrophic factor. And that is like miracle grow for your brain. It allows the neurogenesis or the formation of new nerve cells. And there's three things you can do to increase this compound. And two of them um, go beyond just nutrition. So one is vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is so, so important for your brain. And you primarily need to get that from sun. You can also get it from fatty fish, like salmon. You can get it from cod liver oil. And I even did a video on how to uh, make your own vitamin D supplements using mushrooms, sun-dried. I'll put that link down below. But vitamin D is essential in helping you generate new nerve cells. Exercise is another really big factor because it supplies a lot of blood flow to the brain. And then of course you have fasting. Fasting hands down is probably one of the best ways to trigger this compound and it does a lot of wonderful things for the brain. And I did a whole video on that. I will put that video down below as well. And then we have zinc. Uh, I mean, zinc is the most important trace mineral. It's involved in more enzyme pathways than all of the other trace minerals combined. 
But as far as the brain goes, it's vitally important. And where do you get zinc? Well, zinc is in red meat. It's in fish like salmon. It's in shellfish. It's in uh, sea kelp. And it's in a lot of other foods. But the primary reason why people are not getting enough zinc is not from the diet. It's because they're eating something that's depleting zinc. It's usually cereals or grain products that are loaded with phytic acid. And of course, sugar and alcohol and other things will deplete your zinc. All right, the next nutrient that's really, really important would be something called DHA. That is a type of omega-3 fatty acid. And where do you think you find that? Fatty fish like salmon. As you see, I keep coming back to salmon, which is a common thread through this video. But DHA is vitally important in supporting the membranes around the neurons. And these membranes are made from fat, primarily DHA. And so we need a lot of this unique fat to support the brain. And of course, on the flip side of that, we don't need a lot of omega-6 fatty acids to support the brain. So the more omega-6 fatty acids you have, as in corn oil, soy oil, canola, cottonseed oil, the less omega-3 fatty acids you're going to get. And so I think a really big problem with a lot of people is they do not consume enough omega-3 fatty acids. So salmon, um, halibut, tuna, cod liver oil, sardines, vital. Now, the other big connection to someone's cognitive improvement has to do with their gut. So I can't really talk about improving cognitive function without talking about your gut because there's a huge connection between your gut and your brain. In fact, a lot of the microorganisms in your gut make neurotransmitters and they also make B vitamins, okay? As in vitamin B1 and the other B vitamins that are essential for cognitive function. So when we're talking about gut health, I'm talking about fermented foods, okay? Sauerkraut would be one of them, um, but there's also kefir and kimchi and and fermented vegetables, and there's a lot of other fermented foods in, from different cultures. And of course, the microbes also live off the fiber that's usually in these fermented foods. So there are a lot of nutrients that support the brain, but the most important one would be B1, okay? And then you have D3, you have zinc, and omega-3 fatty acids, okay? Now to reverse engineer this, we just need to know what foods are high in B1, okay? Or what food, is high in B1, vitamin D3, omega-3 fatty acids, and zinc, okay? So the number one food that I think is best for improving your cognitive function is salmon. Because it's loaded with B1, it has vitamin D3, it has zinc, it has omega-3 fatty acids, and a lot of other nutrients that are good for the, the brain that I didn't mention. But again, I'm not talking about just having salmon. You have to have a lot of different foods and you can get these nutrients from other foods, but salmon tends to have some really key nutrients to support your brain. And of course, I'm talking about wild caught salmon. Okay, I'm not talking about uh, farm raised salmon. And uh, I highly recommend consuming the skin on the salmon. Okay, so you can, you can bake it, bake the skin, and uh, it's actually quite delicious. Now, Getting back to B1, there's some other key uh, foods that are very important to supply B1. One would be nutritional yeast. You can put it on your salad, you can um, cook with it, you can just take it as a supplement, but nutritional yeast uh, not only has B1, but it has uh, pretty much all the B vitamins. Now, the reason I like nutritional yeast is because it is a natural source, unless you're getting the fortified nutritional yeast, which I don't recommend, you need the unfortified nutritional yeast. And if you want a good source for that, I put that link down below. Then we get uh, sunflower seeds. They also have B1. Now, out of all the meats, and, and meats, including beef and chicken, have B1. But out of all the meats, pork is at the top of the list. Now, I'm not telling you to consume pork. I'm just telling you that pork has more B1 than other meats. Now, we talked about the nutrients for the brain. Now, let's talk about the things that deplete nutrients in the brain, specifically B1, because it's not just a matter of getting B1 from the diet, it's a matter of making sure that you don't deplete your B1, which is probably more of the situation that people run into. So I'm gonna list off these items that will deplete B1, which affects your cognitive function. Number one, alcohol. Especially if you're an alcoholic, 
you're going to be very deficient in B1, and that's going to affect your cognitive function. All right, number two is sugar, okay? Refined sugar, refined carbohydrates, okay, which is a common problem. Uh, tea, because of the tannic acid, blocks B1 from being absorbed. So if you're a tea drinker, you better make sure you're taking B1. Um, caffeine, okay? Caffeine will definitely deplete B1. So if you're a coffee drinker and you drink a lot of coffee, you might think it's enhancing your cognitive function. Well, it may for about an hour, but if you drink a lot of it, you'll find your cognitive function decrease over time. Also, your ability to put your attention will decrease and your ability to learn if you're consuming too many things with caffeine. Too much caffeine actually lessens the blood flow to your brain. And then we get to the topic of stress, okay? Stress really can uh, do a number on your brain. It can uh, uh, increase glucose, which will affect the brain. And it also just basically destroys the brain. If someone's under chronic stress, boy, does that affect your cognitive function big time. But having enough B1 will protect you against this extra stress. So a high carb diet that turns into glucose that feeds your brain cells, at least temporarily, needs a lot of B1 and it depletes B1. So when you run out of B1, now you can't use that fuel and the nerves starve. Why? Because you don't have enough B1 to metabolize the glucose. All right, antibiotics can deplete B1. Uh, certain medications will deplete B1, like metformin, uh, diuretics, and consuming chocolate, okay? So if you consume a lot of chocolate, and I'm talking about the ketogenic version of chocolate, uh, you could end up with a B1 deficiency. There's a really good um, paper that I, was, I read on this topic. I'll share it down below, but it talked about starving your brain by overfeeding it, okay? Too many carbohydrates. It's very counterintuitive, but that's what's happening versus fasting, okay? So if you think fasting is starving, it's not. In fact, your brain loves fasting. Once you adapt to the ketogenic diet, your body starts to turn your fat into ketones and your brain loves it. So the most important thing you can do for your brain is to switch to a healthy ketogenic diet with periodic fasting, we call that intermittent fasting. That's the most important thing. The second most important thing is to consume foods high in B1. Okay, we've talked about that. But parallel with that, you want to avoid the things that will deplete B1. Now, I just got a picture of like a, a typical college student, right? Who's not getting enough sleep, who's using your brain a lot, who's probably eating a lot of carbohydrates like donuts in the morning with their coffee, maybe a cigarette, and maybe at night, some alcohol, going through a massive amount of stress. Talk about creating a B1 deficiency. That would do it. In fact, that was my story. And that's what this video is about, my history of how I ended up with a very severe B1 deficiency. So I have a lot of um, experience to tell you some of these side effects. Now, I think the next best video to watch would be the one on doing fasting for your brain. Check it out. I put it up right here.